Inflation seems to be creeping its way back into the USA. This has led the S&P 500 to nosedive and the future outlook of the index seems very unpredictable. However, a slightly different story in the UK. Inflation numbers came in lower than expected and the Bank of England paused interest rate hikes for the time being. This led to an increase in the FTSE 100 and a bit in the FTSE 252. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how my trading 212 portfolio has been affected both in my general investment account and my IT. So here is my trading 2 on 2 invest account and as you can see my current portfolio is worth £9,928. Now if I go to extra you can see that I have £1.06 in free funds and this was a dividend from BP yesterday so other than that all my money is actually invested into the market at this present time. Now you can see over the past month my portfolio has gone through quite a bit with most of the month being pretty negative so at one point the portfolio was down 2.83% so that was a £228 loss. And then you can see a big dip, but this was only because I sold some of my holdings. And then later on, you can see that there were some periods where I was in the green. But overall, I don't think this has been the best month with quite a flat return of 0.45 negative return. And that's a loss of £44. However, I'm not at all worried about this. We are kind of in a bear market at the moment with interest rates not stabilizing and no one having a clue where the market is going. I think this is a good time to buy and not worry about the background noise, knowing that when the economy starts to come back at its feet, if you started buying now you'd most likely be very happy with your decision and you'll be a lot better off than not having invested in this time period. Now if I go into my free shares you can see that I have received a total of 35 free shares and that's worth £610 which is quite a lot so thank you for that. As long as the promotion is open you can use my link in the description and get a free share. However I won't actually get a free share so it's not my biggest incentive to actually tell you to sign up. In terms of interest for cash my cash has over the past month given me 25 pence in return so not a huge amount but then again most of my cash was invested into the market. If I go into my history you can see my realized profit and loss is £160 positive. I won't completely say this is accurate I would say it's a lot higher than that just because when you're buying and selling lots of different stocks at different prices it's impossible for Trading212 and any other stockbroker actually to figure out where you bought and sold so this number isn't the most accurate. In terms of dividends I received £78.55 and as you can see my latest dividend was yesterday at £1.06 from BP and a few other small dividends dividends from the almost daily dividend pie which I'll show in the end. So now I'm going to go through all my holdings and you'll see that a lot of these are free shares but I like to keep my free shares in my portfolio just to see if you're investing as a beginner very small amounts into different companies how your portfolio would look overall. So first of all I have Walt's Disney and I have 0.012 shares in that and as you can see Disney has had a lot of roughness over the past month and even if you look at the past year their share prices have absolutely slashed. Currently my my shares are worth £8.38 and that is a loss of 20% so that is a £2.20 loss. In terms of dividend, Disney does not pay a dividend yield quite yet but I do think they are planning to do that very soon and as you can see from their income statement their revenue has gone up but their net income has stayed quite same. From the balance sheets you can see also that they have a lot of assets that can cover their liabilities. From cash flow you can also see they're spending a lot of money investing and financing and it's no surprise that Disney Plus and Disney in general is not doing as well as it has been for the past few decades so investors are taking that on board when they are not buying into Disney and selling off their shares. Next I have 35 shares in Vodafone and as you can see over the past month they've actually gone up by a huge 14%. I suspect this is to do with the merger with three but I could be wrong I guess and in my portfolio those shares are worth £28.46. That is still a loss in my portfolio of 11.6% and that is a loss of £3.54. Now Vodafone does pay a dividend yield and currently it is still very high at 9.6% but I suspect the stock price will be going up and the dividend yield as a percentage is going to go down shortly. So you can see from the income statements the net income has gone up this year and the revenue has stayed quite similar. From balance sheets you can see a lot of liabilities and assets seem to cover the liabilities but as always these balance sheets are very public information and they don't always cover everything. For example assets can be anything. So with having billions of pounds of liabilities you have to make sure that the company is able to pay off these liabilities and they have the right amount of liquidity 
equity in order to do that. So next I have 0.8 shares in the Vanguard Germany all cap ETF, which is the VJER. And as you can see over the past month, they have stayed quite steady with ups and downs. However, they are overall up by 1.27%. And in my portfolio, they are still down by 6.47%. That is a £1.27 loss. I'm not too worried about this. Again, ETF like this, I will hold for the long term anyway. And next, my biggest holding, which is in the FTSE 250. So as you can see, the FTSE 250 has done okay over the past month. It did see a nice peak on Friday the 15th. However, since then, it has gone through a lot of volatility as it always does. So the interest rate steadiness has kind of led the FTSE 250 to be in a much better position than it was in last month. However, overall, the FTSE 250 in my portfolio is down by 1.4%. And that is a loss of £76.68. Now, my strategy with this general investment account is to put my money or most of my money into good ETFs that I think are going to at least hold their value or increase during at least the beginning of the next financial year where I can sell these holdings and transfer them directly into my ISA. As you'll see, I've maxed out my ISA contribution already and I'm kind of getting ready to fill in the ISA again for next year. So next, I have 0.17 shares in Tesla. Over the past month, they did have a nosedive after Friday the 15th. I suspect Friday the 15th was around the time where the CPI numbers came out and they were higher than expected and they were higher than the previous two months. This led the Federal Reserve to increase the interest rates yet again and this led the American markets to actually worry about the longevity and the future of these interest rate climates. And of course, investors seem to have sold out their stocks. But in any case, Tesla in my portfolio is up by 18.49% and that is again gain of £5.36. So as you can see from their income statements, Tesla is doing incredibly well and their revenue seems to be increasing near exponentially. Balance sheets also look good with the number of assets increasing significantly year on year and it seems like they're investing more money into actual operations and their financing costs seems to have come down. Next I have 0.2 shares in Starbucks. Over the past month, Starbucks has gone down by 2.51%. In my portfolio, they are down by 6.99% and that is a loss of £1.20. Starbucks does pay a dividend yield of 2.45% and as you can see the revenue seems to be increasing, net income decreasing and from the balance sheet you can see that they're taking a lot more liabilities than their assets covers. It doesn't always mean a bad thing to have more liabilities than assets, however that could quickly become a bad thing but as long as the company manages the cash flow properly and can pay off their liabilities then they could be in a position to put themselves better into the future. So as the stock market is always forward looking, it's not looking at the current snapshot of what is happening right now. That is what basically determines the value of a stock. So next I have Rolls-Royce and I have 29.7 shares in Rolls-Royce. And as you can see over the past month, Rolls-Royce has increased by 10% overall with a peak yet again on the 15th of September. In my portfolio, they are up by a gigantic 72% and that is a gain of £27.74. Rolls-Royce does not currently pay a dividend yield. And as you can see from the income statement, their net income has decreased and the revenue seems to have increased. And again, they're investing heavily, so their liabilities are a lot higher than their stated assets and they are spending a lot on financing. So next I have 1.6 shares in PayPal and as you can see from the past month they are down 5.15% with no surprises from the 15th of September being their peak and then a big nosedive after that. PayPal does not currently pay a dividend yield and as you can see from their income statement their revenue is increasing and their balance sheets look fine at a glance anyway and in terms of cash flow they're spending a lot less on investing into their company and financing costs seem to have increased quite a bit. So next I have 2.37 shares in orange and as you can see from the past month they've actually been doing quite well with a 9% increase. However in my portfolio they're down by a small 0.35% and that is a loss of only 8 pence. Made worse a little bit by the FX impact otherwise I think I would be breaking even here. But in any case they pay a dividend yield of 6.22% and as you can see from the income statement everything seems to be quite similar to the past two years which is not necessarily necessarily a good thing and in terms of balance sheets you can see that they have quite a bit of liabilities and from cash flow you can see a lot more is gone into investing perhaps on infrastructure and the cost of financing has decreased a little bit from last year. So next I have Nvidia, I only have 0.09 shares in that. 
Overall, Nvidia, as you know, over the past year has done incredibly, incredibly well. They do pay a minute dividend yield of 0.04%. And as you can see from the income statement, 2022 was a very good year and 2023 is still a good year, but maybe not as good as 2022. And I suspect they are investing a lot more. And as you can see, their cost for financing has increased significantly, indicating that they are investing in a lot of technologies. And as you can see from the balance sheet, 2023 isn't as good as 2022, but like I said, the stock market is forward looking. Everyone knows that Nvidia is probably going to be at the forefront of AI technologies. And as a result, investors want to put their money in now so that when it grows in the future, their money will be worth a lot more than it is right now. So next I have 0.2 shares in Nike. You can see that over the past month, it's taken a bit of a nosedive and lost 10.5% of its value. It pays a dividend yield of 1.45%. And as you can see, the revenue has been increasing quite well and their net income seems to have decreased a little bit. Balance sheets look good and cash flow, as you can see, a lot is spent on financing. So next I have 0.49 shares in National Grid. And as you can see over the past month, they are up by 8.82%, which is actually really good. Overall in my portfolio, they are up by 2%. So that's only a 10 pence gain. They do pay a nice dividend yield of 5.2%. 42%. And as you can see from the income statement, the revenue has increased significantly from last year and the net income also. Balance sheets also look quite similar with the amount of liabilities actually decreasing. This could be a lot due to actually letting go of people and then reducing their cost down. And from their cash flow, you can see that their financing has actually gone up in terms of spend. So next I have 0.38 shares in Mercedes-Benz. So over the past month, it's quite steady. So overall, just a loss of 0.75%. In my portfolio overall, they are at a loss of 1.27%. So that's only a 29 pence loss. They pay a big dividend yield of 7%. And as you can see from the income statement, revenue has increased, liabilities have decreased, and the cost of financing has increased slightly. So next I have 149 shares in Lloyds Banking Group. And over the past month, again, they have done quite well with an increase of 8%. In my portfolio, however, they are still down by 8%, so that's a £6.20 loss. They do pay a very nice dividend yield of 5.67%. And as you can see from the income statement, not looking the greatest. However, at a glance, you can't really tell the complete story of a financial company just by looking at their income statement. And you can have a glance at their balance sheet here and their cash flows. So next I have my second biggest holding by far, and that is 471 shares in the iShares S&P 500 ETF. So over the past month, as you can see, recently they have done a nosedive and overall they are down by 1.14%. I thought it would be crazy not to buy here because I do think the S&P 500, as I always have, is a great investment. And I did say a few months ago that at £7.80 or whatever it was, it wasn't the best price to buy. And I stand by that and I didn't buy it at that time and I did buy lower and I still think it has a ways to go down. But in any case, I think it's very stupid not to buy, in my opinion at this price. So I will be buying as much as I can at this price and lower without any single regret. However, in my portfolio overall, they are still down by 0.66%. That is a £23.14 loss. So my strategy going forward is to just keep buying into the FTSE 250 and the iShares S&P 500. As you can see, there was a bit of a peak back in July and then it's gone down again. But last December, it was £8.38. And I do think very, very soon we're going to see that and higher as soon as the interest rates stabilize and we actually see the peak of the federal funds rate in the USA. So next I have six. 6.2 shares in Royal Mail and overall they are up by a huge 12% which is actually very surprising. In my portfolio they are up by 27% so this was actually a great investment with a return of £3.60. They don't currently pay a dividend yield but if you look at the income statements you can see the income has decreased. Balance sheets show the number of assets decreasing and as you can see from the cash flow the operating costs have significantly gone down which could be a good signal for the future costs. So next I have IAG and 6.3 shares in that. Over the past month, not the greatest, with a loss of 5.88% no dividend yield and as you can see from the income statement the revenue has increased rapidly and the net income has increased from the last two days this is not a surprise as aviation has literally just taken off over the past few months furthermore the cost of flights has actually decreased which has kind of contributed to the decrease in inflation and this has led more people to book holidays especially given that the winter season is going to be coming in europe a lot of people are going to be looking 
at traveling internationally. So next I have two shares in H&M and as you can see over the past month they are down by 4.19% where there was a nice peak on the 12th of September. However in my portfolio they are still up by 7.7%. .7 six percent and that is a gain of one pound and 72. They do pay a dividend yield of 4.1 percent and as you can see from the income statement revenue seems very high and balance sheets look okay at a glance and you can see they are spending a lot on financing and investing. So next I have 0.29 shares in GlaxoSmithKline and as you can see over the past month they have been doing really really well with a 12% increase. I feel like a lot of the FTSE companies in the UK so the FTSE 250 and 100 are doing really well over the past month. In addition to the interest rates being paused I do think this is a good signal to some of these companies however we still don't know if this interest rate has peaked and it's quite unlikely that it has peaked and I think next month when core inflation numbers come out higher than expected because I think they would because the cost of shelter is always lagging and the cost of renting has gone up significantly over the past few months. I think that the interest rates will be increased yet again. But in any case, GSK does pay 4.68% dividend yield. And as you can see from the income statement, revenue has increased significantly and so has net income. So next I have two shares in direct line insurance. And as you can see over the past month, these British companies have been doing really, really well. And that is an increase of 17%, which is actually quite a shocker. Overall in my portfolio, they're still down by 8%, but that is only a 32 pence loss. So they do pay a dividend yield of 4.19%. And as you can see from the income statements their net income has gone down significantly and balance sheets look like they're holding on to less assets than before and the cost of financing has also increased quite drastically. So next I have Deutsche Lufthansa. I have 7.3 shares in that and overall in the last month they are down by 2.65%. So that overall in my portfolio is still down by 10% and that is a loss of £5.87. So you can see from their income statement the revenue has increased significantly so has net income and this is due to the fact that people are taking a lot more flights than they did two years ago and that is pretty much a fact. Balance sheets also look better than last year and their cash flow seems to indicate that they're investing a lot of their money into their future endeavours. So next I have 0.6 shares in Delivery Hero and over the past month it's not been doing too well at all with a loss of 13%. So overall in my portfolio it is down by a staggering 22% and that is a loss of £5.10. They don't pay a dividend yield but however you can see their revenue has increased but their net income has decreased quite significantly. Balance sheets look like they're getting worse in terms of liabilities and here you can see their cash flow. So next I have exactly one share in Carnival. Over the past month they have dived down 4.51% but in my portfolio overall they're up by 50% so that's a £3.56 gain. They pay a dividend yield of 3.7% which is pretty respectable and as you can see from the income statements the revenue has increased significantly however net income is not the best and it's still negative however it is still better than the past two years. Here's a look at their balance sheet and here is a look at their cash flow. So next I have BP and I have 18.4 shares in that. Over the past month they are up by 10%. No doubt due to the increase in fuel prices yet again. In my portfolio they are still overall down by 1.49% and that is a loss of £1.47. So they do pay a dividend yield of 4.14% and as you can see from the income statements they have been making an absolute staggering kill and everything in this company should be all well and good due to the staggering profits they have been making. So next I have BMW and I have 0.12 shares in that and over the past month they are still down 0.71% and in my portfolio they are absolutely broken even at a 0% gain or loss whichever way you look at it kind of glass half empty half full and that is a gain of nothing too. They do pay a great dividend yield at 8.55% and as you can see from the income statement, BMW has been doing incredibly well. Balance sheets are here and here's a look at their cash flow with the cost of financing being a lot higher. So next I have 1.37 shares in Aston Martin. So over the past month they have not been doing too well. They are down by a big 15%. Overall in my portfolio however they are up by 94% which is still pretty huge and that is a return of £1.88. Now they don't pay a dividend yield but as you can see their revenue has increased with their net income decreasing quite significantly. Here's a look at their balance sheets. As you can see, the cost of liabilities 
is increasing and here is a glance at their cash flow. So next I have 0.02 shares in ASML. Over the past month they have dived down 10.49%. In my portfolio overall they are down by 16% so that's a loss of £1.95. They do pay a small dividend yield of 1.07% and here from the income statement you can see that their revenue has been increasing. However their liabilities are also increasing too and here's a quick look at their cash flow. So next I have 0.3 shares in Apple and as you can see over the past month they are down by 1.41%. Not too bad in the grand scheme of things but in my portfolio overall they are up by 13% and that is a gain of £5.46. They pay a very tiny dividend yield of 0.55% and as you can see their revenue is increasing and everyone knows that Apple is holding on to a lot of cash so as you can see their operating cash flow is huge nearly approaching 12 billion dollars and their operating income can completely take care of everything else. So next I have 0.9 shares in Amazon. Over the past month they are down by 3.84% and in my portfolio overall they are up by 40.25% and that is a gain of £28.51. So these companies such as Apple, Microsoft and Google honestly do not have to worry about their financials but here's a quick look. Revenue is increasing as expected. Balance sheets look like this and here is the cash flow with their operating income being able to more than take care of their financing and investing. So next again I have one of the big companies I have 0.14 shares in Google. So over the past month, they are up still by 0.89%. In my portfolio, they are up by a big 43%, but that is only a gain of £4.57 here. They don't pay a dividend yield currently. And as you can see, their revenue is increasing. Their balance sheet is here. And here's a quick look at their cash flow. And lastly, in my general investment account or my trading 212 invest account, you can see I have 0.03 shares in AMD. They are down by a big 8.97% over the past month. In my portfolio, however, they are still up by 26% and that is a gain of 52 pence. They don't pay a dividend yield and we can quickly look at their income statement with their revenues going up quite a lot. The balance sheets also show that in 2022, they had a huge amount of assets that can completely cover their liabilities. Here's a look at cash flow and we can see that their financing costs have increased quite significantly but overall I think AMD is going to be fine if they go into looking at more AI technologies I think they'll be up there with Nvidia. In either case AMD chips are being used in games consoles and even handhelds now so I think AMD is going to be fine. So in terms of pies I only have the one pie here which is a copy of the almost daily dividend pie. I did accidentally sell £25 worth and that was a regret however you can't just put in £25 back the minimum investment amount is £50 so I just left it. In either case I'm still receiving dividends and as you can see overall the portfolio has yielded me negative 2.93% and that's a loss of £11. Not too bad at all actually and if I scroll down I have received a total of £10.30 in dividends which is not too bad however this doesn't really account for the loss in the overall portfolio value so I think when the portfolio actually yields me a slight profit I will be selling off the portfolio or I might keep it if you guys are interested to see what happens by investing around £400 in the almost daily dividend pie. You can find out details of this pie online but as you can see there are 50 slices and Apple being one of them. You can see Apple is up by 13%. I'm going to quickly scroll through these. Some mentions here, Johnson & Johnson down by 10%, AT&T down by nearly 20%, McDonald's down by 1.7%, JP Morgan & Chase up by 10%, and there are a whole lot more companies here that you can check out for yourself in the Almost Daily Dividend Pie, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. So here is my trading 212 ISA. As you can see, the current balance is £20,594.52. And as you can see, my ISA utilization was £20,000. So this is what the account had. For those of you with eagle eyes, you can see that it says I have £21,362 invested. You might be thinking, how on earth have I done that? But essentially, I've just been buying and selling the FTSE 250 and the S&P 500. So as you can see in my ISA, it's very, very simple. I just go all in into one ETF and when I think the time is right to sell I will sell it and then try to buy again or another ETF at a decent price. As you can see from my history I do a lot more of this buying and selling on my ISA as you don't have to worry about capital gains at all. So you can see my realized profit is £1,110 which in the one year is not too bad at all 
for your ISA. But in any case, my ISA is very, very simple. As you can see, over the past month, there have been a lot of roller coaster rides with loads of sharp peaks and then drops. But overall, my portfolio is down by 3.6%, and that is a loss of £768, which sounds quite a lot. But when you have a larger portfolio, even small percentage points equate to a higher number. So as you can see, only one holding, and that's in the FTSE 250 by Vanguard, and I have 716 shares in that. Over the past month, the FTSE 250 has increased by 2.7%. 1% as we saw in the trading to one to invest account. I have my limit sell so I think at 29.87 I want to sell this all off and as you can see my average price is 29.81 and I do kind of think that was quite a high price to be paying in hindsight. However I'm not worried I can wait this out and they do pay a dividend every now and then. As you can see my last dividend was paid on the 30th of June and I'm expecting more dividends to be paid at the end of this month. So basically that will be my strategy to actually try to buy at good prices on both the FTSE 250 and the GSPX. Currently, I think my money will be more allocated towards the GSPX iShares S&P 500, as I think it is at a much better price than it was at 783. And like I said, I didn't buy at that time and I had faith that it would drop. And now is the time putting my money where the mouth is. I mean, well, how does the saying go? Putting my mouth where my, putting my money where the mouth is. You know what I mean? So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.